Hey fun fans, our feature team is 148 the Robo Wranglers, and they've hooked us up with an awesome giveaway of a Deep Space Cowboys 148-118 t-shirt. To enter, be a YouTube subscriber and comment in any video with your favorite 148 robot. You can enter in any video that has his intro through October 9th, so make sure you comment below. How does your guys' team approach kickoff every season? Uh, what, is, what does your team do that you think maybe results in a more successful season compared to what other teams might do? So we do try to do some stuff prior to kickoff instead of just jumping straight in. Uh, we do a lot of team building stuff. And so we'll all come down to the lab one day and we'll participate in design challenges where we'll break off into groups and we'll compete against each other just to get ourselves back into the design process and have some fun while we're at it. Then we'll have days where it's, it's just for fun. We'll bring video game systems, we'll bring board games. We'll usually play some Ultimate Extreme Rubber Wrangler Dodgeball as Tyler decided to put up right now. Yeah. I, I just then, want to point out, by the way, that our uh, our old producer, Nick, I think just blew out a knee at the end of this uh, clip, by the way. so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Nick is a beast in dodgeball, by the way. Yes. Um, we, don't, we don't have – so there's really uh, suggested rules in Ultimate yeah. Extreme <laughs> Robo Wrangler Dodgeball, but the that. mentors like kind of just get to do whatever they want, and Nick takes that to the extreme. So, what's yeah. the What's the worst injury that's occurred playing? Uh, our, actually, <laughs> yeah. actually, our operator last year, we were playing in the lab. I forget the day before the kickoff. The day before the kickoff, day. and he actually broke his wrist. <laughs> he <laughs> fell back, and yeah, he broke his wrist playing Ultimate Extreme Robo Wrangler Dodgeball. So. But he got the cast off before our first competition, and that's the important. Yes, yeah. <laughs> team player. <laughs> Okay, sorry, go ahead, Josh. <laughs> kickoff, that's exciting. So, yeah, so on kickoff, <laughs> back to the subject, uh, we'll always, we'll spend almost the entire day doing a very detailed game analysis, so we'll find out where we think the points are and what we'll prioritize of our abilities, so where we need to uh, put most of our efforts, especially early in the season. We will usually define goals of what we want to do, and we will decide how we're going to achieve those goals and we'll work toward those achievements. Uh, we have a championship map too, where we have to plot the path to winning the world championship. And we figure out how to progress through every single stage of that map. So we'll figure out how to get out of our division. We'll figure out how to get uh, into the finals and then we'll figure out how to win the finals. And then after kickoff, we'll like do routine, like regular discussions with the whole team to kind of keep everyone updated on where we're at with all those goals and achievements. But most importantly, probably, at the end of the day, every year at kickoff, we play more Ultimate Extreme Rubber Angler <laughs> Dash. It's, it's a running really theme the going on here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys want to talk more about the roadmap? Oh, sure. Um, the So our, our roadmap, so what, what we have up on the screen right now is part of our, um, you know, analysis, uh, prioritization analysis. So we really talk about and we really try to identify on kickoff what um, things that we think are important in the robot. So um, score fast was not that important. Scoring super or stupid fast was Wasn't very planned. important. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, and so you can kind of see this is from from last year, um, some of the things that we prioritize. And a lot of these things are things that make it on the board every year. Score stupid fast is usually there. <laughs> usually um, every match is usually um, there. Consistency, don't get pushed, things like that. Um, but uh, we try, we also try with the, the championship map is uh, something that we put up. Um, Sometimes this changes. Um, it's not usually the same every year, but, um, you know, it, and, and this year, you know, it could change again. But especially, I think, uh, from 2016 to 2017, it changed significantly. Um, and so we really like to go through. So um, seating high is always, uh, you know, going to help you be able to. Uh, you know, determine your alliance and to do that, um, you know, we list all the ways that we can get RPs, which changes every year. Um, but we know we can't always seed high. And so being a great pick is another way that we can get um, to be on a great alliance, which is the next thing on our path. Um, and then winning a division. Um, it's been the same for a long time. <laughs> win two quarterfinals, win two semifinals, 
win two finals, except in 2015. It was not the same back then. Um, <laughs> but uh, we we, then, uh, we don't we don't think about we don't think about 2015. Hey, we loved. Well, you guys liked 2015. I'm sure. It's such a end. bad rep. <laughs> 2015 till the end. <laughs> but um, you know, and so going through that stuff kind of helps us refocus um, and and say like, okay, we you know our ultimate goal is always to win a world championship. What are the steps to get there? We don't take those for granted like everybody knows what those are we like to review them you know being a rookie and stuff this was my first year of actually being on the team and it kind of gives you a literal okay this is what we have to do in order to win and it was just it's it's kind of that clear you know people can explain it but seeing it right there in front of your face is just kind of that oh okay so that's okay got it so it's it's really cool that I like that we do that so we have a lot of kids that come from Vex, and actually it was a very infamous conversation during kickoff <laughs> last year that happened. But, you know, in Vex, you just win every match. Uh, the, the, the concept of RPs is a little foreign. And so one of our really veteran Vex kids that joined the Wranglers last year, he was like, I don't understand why we can't just win every match, and that will make us good. And so we, we kind of- Those were the days. Season. Yeah, just win every match. Like, what's the downside? <laughs> whatever match cool so uh moving on to when you're actually at the events uh what does your guys team do for scouting when you're at events and how do you guys utilize the information that you're gathering sure um this is uh kind of my wheelhouse um i'm one of the scouting mentors on 148 um so we actually had a complete uh, redesign of our entire scouting system last year that was led by our two lead scouts last year, uh, Fran and Faith. Um, so Fran actually graduated last year. Faith is going to be a senior this year, so we still have her. So we actually utilize Google Forms. And so um, first thing we do is we have a Google Form for pit scouting. Uh, our pit scouting is really, really simple. We used to ask a ton of questions and realize we weren't getting any actual useful data from that. Um, and so our pit scouting, we really stripped it down this year. Um, we ask um, just a few basic things. We asked about drive trains. We asked about programming language, mostly so we know if we can support that team or not. Um, and we ask um, what we wanted to know what level they started at that was important um to get to know in pit scouting and then we started asking number of batteries that was a question we started asking because um we started using the larger anderson connectors and so we couldn't share batteries with our team members anymore a lot of the time um and so we actually started asking that um as a question just so if we're going to go on a long elim run with a team if they only have two batteries, that could actually start to cause problems if we can't loan them batteries. Um, so that's really all we ask on pit scouting. And then uh, the next thing we have is our match scouting. Uh, and this is, again, a Google form. The kids literally fill these out on their phones. Um, and so we have battery packs in there. And we tried to make it as user-friendly as possible. Um, and so it's really, um, you can click on it during a match. We still had paper forms, so they could more easily kind of scout um, and just write things quick. But then they would take their form right at the end of the match, fill out the Google form with all the information that they had written down. And like I said, we tried to make the Google form pretty user friendly. We've got lots of pictures in there. Um, it's uh, if you go to the rocket levels, like we even like highlighted the rocket level, put the game piece, like make sure that we can't enter in the wrong data um, and things like that. So all of that actually goes into, if you're familiar with Google forms, goes into a Google sheet. And that is our scouting database. And so this tab that we're on right now is just the raw data. That's pretty boring. Um, but the second tab there <laughs> is our QC. This is actually something we started doing new this year. So we actually pull the data from Blue Alliance. And we, oh, no, actually, we don't use Blue Alliance data for this. But we, act, oh, yeah, we do. We pull the matches and <laughs> the team numbers. And we can actually see if we've entered a response for every match for every team. So you can see those yellow cells there are teams that haven't been entered. And we actually started using, having people go watch the webcast uh, for anything that we missed and going through and filling those in if we felt like we really needed them. Um, so that was kind of like a cool system that we developed last year that worked really well. Um, the next tab I believe in there is uh, the, oh, that's just a team list. That's just for data usage. Um, so this is our actual list. 
Um, I, I deleted the team number so nobody gets salty about where they were on our list. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so this is what we actually, um, when we're in the scouting meeting, um, we actually make categories to try and make it a little bit more fun. So at the top, so you can kind of see some of the categories. And we actually, if you hover over, I think the Franklins or the home slices, we theme them after which event we're at. So the categories are themed based on what location we're in or like inside jokes we have at that competition. <laughs> but if you highlight them, we lay out the criteria uh, for those lists. And so we may be looking for a specific thing and a partner um, and we kind of put all those people there. And then we'll pull in some of our data with our stats about the things that were important. So I believe this is the state championship list. So we are really uh, looking for in our third pick um, where they, what, uh, level they started on, what level they ended on, um, and a few other things. So we really like highlight um, that data so we can see it and order it appropriately. Um, and then the next tab in there um, is the actual list. So this is what we use during alliance selection. And you can see on the left hand uh, side, we uh, X off who gets picked, we null teams as teams not from our list get picked and, and move them up. Um, and then we have all the data on that slide too. So if we need to make any last minute changes, we can. We have like little comments and notes about certain teams um, so we can remember like what we talked about at the meetings. Um, and then I think we have in the uh, oh, analysis tab, that's just data. Um, yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah, I think the rest of that is just you know, for data purposes, and then we have a tab for improvement. So uh, then when we get to ELIMS, we have a different form um, because we like to collect different data for ELIMS. The things that are important to us in qualifications are not necessarily what's important to us in ELIMS. So we actually create a whole separate form and a whole separate database for that. So um, it's a simplified version, um, really simplified, because we're usually looking at more alliance strategy than individual robot performance. Um, but we do collect data, and if we take a look at that scouting database for the ELIMS, um, we actually have like a special um, tab in there. Uh, if you can go to the second tab, uh, that's just the raw data. So we actually break it down by alliance, and so you can see this is from state championship. I didn't um, erase the team numbers from here because this is all just pure data. Um, and so we can actually, we, we look at what each team is doing, and we look at what their, um, we think that their max score could be in the eliminations. And so that kind of uh, gives us an idea of how we want to adjust our strategy per uh, different alliance. And so this is just a really quick way to look at it. And the ones that are grayed out are the ones that were eliminated. Um, and so as soon as they get eliminated, we kind of gray them out. And then we just have the data left uh, of the teams that we're still facing. Um, so like I said, this was completely redone this year. We like literally revamped our whole system. And like I said, our two lead scouts um, were pretty much responsible for that, along with a couple of the scouting mentors. Um, we find, uh, we we really liked it. This like is probably the system that's worked the best for us in the 10 years that I've been on the team. It was really smooth, really solid. We had all the data that we needed at our fingertips. We could correct things when we needed to. Um, it was awesome. Uh, you can, I'm really passionate. Scouting is like my favorite thing in FRC. Um, I just, I guess it's the math brain in me. I just love all the data and stuff like that. So um, it really worked for us and we, we really, really liked it. So. Hey, Adrian, there were a few questions just in chat. We'll just field right away. Sure. Asking why, uh, why Google Forms and not using an app? And then if you guys publish these at all. Um, so we haven't discussed publishing them, but I will think about it now. Um, <laughs> and uh, we don't use an app because we're lazy and we're really good at Excel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so related to that, just the one, the only thing I can think of is like, you know, some events obviously are not always good for like phone service, et cetera. So yeah. for like the forms, if you're filling it out, well, does it just store it offline until it gets connection and can push the data out or does that, what, does that cause problems at all? We did not have significant problems with that this year. We uh -huh. did have some data issues. Um, and when we ran into those, we would just keep the paper copies, which is why we wanted to keep the paper copies. And we would wait until we had signal or wait till we get into the hotel. And then we would just enter the data. So we would kind of have like a separate place to store that paper. And uh -huh. then we would know like, okay, now we've got we've to enter these in um, to make sure that everything's complete. Um, uh, and, and actually this year we did something new based on a 
terrible situation that we were in. Uh, the Texas State Championship like didn't have enough seating, and we were all like super crowded, and it was not uh, it was not a an environment that was going to be conducive to getting any type of good data. So we actually sent some kids back to our hotel to watch the web stream and scout from the web stream. Um, and then we actually kept doing that because it was so useful. Like when we missed data or um, when we just had like situations like that where we weren't getting uh, phone service or something, we could have those kids um, enter in all that stuff so we didn't miss anything. And they would come to the event. We usually stay pretty mm -hmm. close. It's not like they were, you know, in some, you know, prison hotel cell <laughs> or something, just, you know, 148 scouting and we never let them come to the event. But um, they would maybe like come to the event for a couple hours. We would gather up a lot of like missed data or, or um, things like that or things that need to be entered. Then they would go back to the hotel, fix everything and come back. So worked really well. Cool. Um, all right. And our last question before we're going to take another break, uh, what would you guys attribute most to your team finding so much consistency and your success over such a long period of time now? So my literal note for this says people and pranks. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I'll go into a little more detail. Um, I kind of alluded earlier, we have a really unique program here uh, at Greenville ISD where we really have a pipeline of students. We start robotics in fourth and fifth grade at our district and creating a uh, students every single year starting at the fifth grade that want to be robo wranglers when they grow up um, <laughs> really does a lot to help your team's success long-term. Uh, we come from a pretty small community, um, and so the robotics program is pretty well known, and we have kids um, that you know come to me when they're five years old that say, I just can't wait to be a Robo Wrangler. Mm -hmm. um, but having robotics available to them, starting in fourth and fifth grade is really um, how we get that. Uh, excitement built up. And we've really created a culture uh, on our team that, and in our community that really celebrates robotics. And that, I think, mm -hmm. has been the biggest key to our success Definitely, um, yeah. Yeah, over a long period of time. So, um, And like I said earlier, we take our goals really seriously. We want to have fun. We want to make friends and we want to chase excellence, but we really focus on having fun. Um, so our, you know, our prank war with 118 is kind of infamous. Uh, we even have a banner for it now. We it's do. hung up with all of our other banners. We're very proud. We have officially of, won. <laughs> we're very, very proud of that banner. Um, but we, that is really fun for us. We spend whole meetings talking about how we're going to prank 118. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> it is amazingly fun. And um, there's been tons of pranks over the years. Um, they've gotten us pretty good and we've gotten them pretty good. And obviously it kind of, uh, it started with the, it started before my time. Um, but my first 118 prank was the ball pit uh, in 2011, which was amazing. Um, and then um, they did the mustaches um, in 2013, which was also incredible. And we still have them all like hanging up in our shop. Yeah. <laughs> it was really it was awesome. Desk, actually, yep. yeah. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> and and then um and then there were a few more throughout the years, but then last year we blacked out 118's robot uh at Champs, which was awesome in black foil. That was actually Mentor Nick's idea. Um so he he <laughs> wins points for that. Yep, that one right there. And then obviously the the drive through <laughs> this year was the best. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even there when it was filmed, but I think you guys were. Josh yeah, I had, was talking. I had to drive it. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, took a couple shots of it. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That, was a, that was some fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was really great. Uh, we make a lot of memes to TBH. Um, we have a, a an entire Slack channel dedicated to memes. Uh, we were going through it. And uh, we should have put more in the media yeah. folder, but there were just too many. Um, and so we like to make fun of ourselves as much as we, um, you know, make fun of each other. I don't even know. We just, I don't know. We just have a lot of fun. Um, our team culture is really the most important thing to me. Um, robot success, you know, on the field kind of just comes with that. We, uh, we're a well-oiled machine at competitions, which allows us to really um, take advantage of luck when it comes to us, because luck is 
part of any championship run. Uh, Tyler just threw up some pictures of some game nights that we do, movie nights that we do, just to have fun with each other, do some team building um, in our shop and really create, uh, you know, the culture that we've created. Um, but especially um, when it comes to getting on Einstein, when it comes to making a championship run, um, we can all rely on each other. We all know each other. We've all beat each other in Mario Kart. We've all... Actually, I don't think Emma's ever beaten me in Mario Kart. <laughs> oh, shade, the shade. JVN usually beats... No, d Rao actually beats everyone always in Mario beats everybody Kart. in Mario Kart. Why am I not surprised? Why am yeah. I not surprised? <laughs> um, and so we just know each other really well. And so when we're at competition, we can just focus. Uh, laser focus. We know how to laugh with each other, but we also know <laughs> that when it's time to get serious, we can all trust each other and we're all there for each other. And this is Josh's favorite meme. Yeah. Put it up. <laughs> this is Josh's favorite <laughs> gif. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. Okay. I think I remember last not year. Accurate. <laughs> uh, one of the referees asked why we had those little Lexan flaps on the front of our robot. And that is JVN's way of describing how they move. <laughs> was was that? So. Well, and I and I think last year too, you guys. Uh, I think you guys published all of your Slack emojis. I think it was yes. last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I remember. I remember seeing that. So that's another good example. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.